Hey, Matt Johnson here. I just want to take a few minutes here to talk about matching line to the fishing rod. You know, all the years working retail, a lot of anglers come in and say, hey, I want a walleye rod, or hey, what line should I use for walleyes? You know, what I'd always ask is, well, what's the setup? What's the plan? What's the lure? So there's a formula to this on how you match the line to the rod and to the lure. Uh, so you can land big fish on light line. And we, we did it today. We lost or landed some big fish on light line. So what I do oftentimes is I first try to figure out the lure I'm gonna fish, what do I wanna use? Do I wanna fish a spoon? Am I gonna fish a tiny tungsten? Am I gonna fish a tika minnow? Am I gonna fish aggressively or negative? And then from there, I start thinking about the line and the rod type. So let's talk about like a noodle rod. So I'm fishing a noodle rod. I'm probably gonna be fishing a two or three pound test line. This rod has forgiveness in it. You can see that light tip, hard backbone. So I can get away with a two or three pound test line. So if I'm fishing a spoon, a little heavier application, I'm probably gonna fish a three pound test line. If I'm fishing, let's say, a smaller tungsten jig, I'm probably gonna fish a two pound test line because it's gonna hang that jig more naturally. It's gonna take more of the stretch or the kink out of the line. So if I'm using a lighter line, lighter jig, maybe a spoon, a little heavier, heavier line. So spooler rod or spooler and noodle combo, two or three pound test line. So I'm matching that up. I have that formula figured out. Now when you jump to, let's say, a spring bobber rod, right? So now I got a rod here that's got a spring bobber on it. I'm just fishing a scepter rod here and I'm fishing smaller tungsten. So I'm now dropping down to let's say a two pound test line. And this is actually an ultra light spring bobber rod. So I say that because there's light action and medium light action spring bobber rod. So what you can do with those heavier springs is I can actually get away with a three pound test line or even a four pound test line. So if I'm fishing heavier tungsten, on a medium light spring, I can even fish a four pound test line. So a lot of anglers instantly see a spring bobber rod and think, oh, finesse, put the two pound line on it. No, I got a lot of rods with spring bobbers that have three and even four pound test line because I might be fishing a heavier jig. Again, there's a formula, I'm matching the jig to the line to the rod. So if I'm spring bobber fishing, I'm probably gonna fish anywhere from a two to a four pound test line. Again, it depends on the presentation, little micro, Number 12, tungsten, probably a two pound test line in this thing with an ultralight rod and an ultralight spring bobber. And then when you jump into, let's say more of a perch setup or something to that effect, and you go on to walleye and so on and so forth, you start playing into the four pound test lines, the five pound test lines, the six pound test lines. Heavier action rods, you can get away with heavier lines. So if I'm fishing, let's say walleyes with a dead meat rod, I'm gonna be fishing a five pound test line. You can even fish a four pound test line if you're fishing a smaller spoon. So you have to think about the entire equation. It's not as simple as just saying, I'm going walleye fishing, I'm going pan fishing. Ask yourself what rod you're using, then start to think about the line you're using, and then think about the lure you're using. It's a complete formula, there's a complete package, and that'll help you catch more fish. So before you hit the ice, think about everything you plan to do with that setup, and then start thinking about how you're gonna put those pieces together. It'll help you catch more fish.